Got a great group here. Okay, let's get uh, rocking and rolling here. Let's see here. I've got uh, just looking at all these awesome people on here. All right, and uh, continuing to climb. Okay, so obviously last week got a lot of attention. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, earlier or later this week on Friday, we're going to have another conversation or compliance call. We're going to talk more about what we're going to talk about today, which of course is uh, the NAR settlements and some of the things that are happening there. Uh, but before I jump into that, I just want to give some perspective. And I want to talk about how to approach different problems, challenges, things that have come up, how you come to uh, you know, determining the impact of those things, solutions to those things, and how you turn them into opportunities. But as you as you move through this whole thing, it, I have to tell you that I've always appreciated the little story. And the story is about being positive. And so here, some of you have heard me share this before, but I'm just going to give you a little bit of a reminder. So, you know, little Johnny's been just absolutely this horrible little kid. He's been naughty as ever. And here is, you know, approaching Christmas time. And of course, his mother and his father say, you know what, we're going to teach him a really big lesson. Instead of, in fact, instead of giving him a big lump of coal, we're going to give him a big box and bag of manure. Why? Because you know what? He has been just, you know what, a little, you know what. And so Christmas morning comes, he comes running downstairs, like all young people, it seems nowadays, thinking they're entitled to something. He comes down, he rips open the box. <laughs> Excuse me, he rips open this box. And inside of it, he sees and smells, of course, this manure. And he screams gleefully as he opens the box. And his parents cannot figure out how on earth, why would he be so excited? Why would he be so happy? And the reason he was so happy is he couldn't believe it, but he screams out, you got me a pony, you got me a pony, you got me a pony. Now, look, that's about finding the positive in everything. And look, any one of us in just a millisecond or a moment can get sidelined in regards to how we see this world. So first and foremost, let's just talk about problems, solutions, their impact, and the opportunities. So if you're taking notes, I want you to just, in fact, I gave the wrong order. The order that I would recommend that you stick with would be, all right, what's the problem? All right, what, what do we have as a problem? This is universal to anything. Number And part of the problem, right, is we have to become aware. You can't fix anything that you're not aware of. So first and foremost, we identify, all right, number one, that there's a problem. We become aware of it. Number two, I've always appreciated looking at the impact of a problem. So whenever I'm sitting here going, okay, wait a second here, I've got a problem. What's the impact of that problem? Is the impact negative? Is it positive? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it a tough one? Is it a bad impact, a good impact, a great impact, a terrible impact? You know, that's to determine. And then the third is to come up with solutions. And what are the solutions to those problems if they're really impactful? And then number four is, is there an opportunity within this problem? So that's that's a really important part of the success of leadership is identifying the problem, recognizing there's a problem, being aware of a problem, looking at the impact of that problem. Because sometimes you have a problem, you're like, yeah, it's not really that big of a deal. It's not that big of an impact. But sometimes we'll lose our minds on problems that don't have almost any impact. And then the third, of course, is looking for a true solution or solutions and then saying, OK, is there an opportunity with all of this? So let's talk about that. So as we know, there was the lawsuit that was agreed upon, not officially signed off by the courts yet. But the, 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 the lawsuit that's a national class action suit that, of course, would encompass a number of different companies. Now, what is very interesting to me is there's a few highlights to this suit. And here's one of them. One of them is the fact that if you have a company that's over $2 billion in sales volume for 2022, well, you're not included in the umbrella and the protection of that suit. Well, believe it or not, there's a handful of organizations in this valley, let's just say specifically Utah, Salt Lake, right? Wasatch Front, Salt Lake, Davis, Weber. Utah or Utah County, all of it, you know, Washington County, the whole the whole works, the state of Utah. But as 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 collectively, 
what we know is, is that we're closing personally over $2 billion in 2022 in sales volume. We're one of the top organizations in the state of Utah. There's only a few above us. And at the same time, there's some above us that are also over $2 billion that are not included in the, quote, anywhere settlement. And if you know what anywhere is, that they changed their name to anywhere. They were known as Rilogy. Before that, they were known as NRT. But that includes both, or not both, a number of brands, which would be Century 21, Better Homes and Gardens, Coldwell Banker, uh, ERA, and Sotheby's. So, <coughs> excuse me, all of those brands are included in the settlement that was for $83 million that's supposed to be signed on by the courts, approved by the courts, approved by the plaintiffs, and that they believe the judge is going to approve it this first week of April. With that being said, the lawsuit that's been agreed upon for us actually includes and has no limitations to the size of the organization. If I am an organization that is not included in any, any previous, whether it could be the, the, the settlements of Keller Williams, the settlements of Anywhere, and the settlements which include all those other brands that I mentioned, I have to tell you, I might be a little nervous. There's no question about it. The nice thing is, is that well, that means a lot of money is going to be spent, even on a local level, because if you aren't aware, Century 21, Everest, is one of about seven different brokerages that an attorney took it upon himself to say, hey, we're going to get involved in this class action suit, and we're going to sue these organizations. Well, the good news is we're already in the process of getting our name removed from the suit uh, because it's a national class action, and it actually isn't possible to sue us or legal to sue us. And so hopefully they willingly will let us out. If not, we'll have to get to the judge and have him uh, get us out. And so from that standpoint, from a local level of lawsuits, not overly worried. If I am other companies that are not included, I know who are doing over more than $2 billion worth of sales volume in 2022. There's a handful. I'm not going to name them by name, but just think about a number of your discount brokers or flat fee brokerages and think of some of the ones that are fairly large, uh, ones that are playing massive discounts, and none of them are included in these suits and these settlements. And so that's a big deal if you are an organization of our size, as there are a handful of those that are the uh, independent organizations who are flat fee based, who will not be included in the suit. And will be or the settlement but will be included continuity to continue to be involved in other suits and not covered that's a big 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 deal so setting that aside and i'll open it up it just if anybody has any questions but i just want you to know from the standpoint of the organization we are in great shape all right now when it comes to the real issue which is the nonsense that's going out there which is yes there's a lawsuit but as you can you know whether you were on ksl several weeks ago or most recently from even cnn to a few other news and media outlets they've said it is the end of six percent commissions um i i don't know what is more comical right if we talk about a problem we talk about the impact we talk about the solutions and we talk about the opportunities uh, first and foremost, we need to be the educators of our people, and that is the inaccuracy and the lies in which the media is putting out there, right? And and that in itself is going to create some challenges because people are going to believe that a seller never needs to pay a commission because of that. Now, you know, depending on what data, I've had someone tell me recently that there was a, more, a few more states, but let's just say there's a handful of states, we being one of them that have a buyer broker agreement in place and also that would include the agency agreement when we were operating out of california interestingly enough the the buyer broker in california did not exist an agency agreement existed in california but not a buyer broker now you may say well george what's the difference if you don't know this is the difference in a, in a nutshell an agency agreement is your state regulation saying, hey, you got to let me know. You got to isolate the fact that I'm working on your behalf. The buyer broker agreement portion, not just the agency portion, the buyer broker portion is what includes the fact of how commissions operate, which is you all know, if you hopefully have been filling them out like you should be, you know that it says in so many words, if the seller doesn't pay the commission, you're responsible for this amount. Now, I know agents have gotten into the habit at times over the years. I've seen agents here and there, a few, where they'll put a zero. If the seller's not willing to pay commission, 
then it's zero to you as a buyer. Well, what we do know, of course, is that's just not reality today, that if a buyer's agent wants to get paid, they need to be putting a number in there. Now, as we, you, you, you may or may not know, I just want to remind you, and that is, is that it is business as usual until July. However, I believe that there are going to be, because of the impact of this, there's going to be a number of solutions, but there's also going to be a number of opportunities. Let me start with just what I would consider opportunities. I'm going to get into some of the meat of this. And then uh, again, Friday, we're going to talk about this. So much of our trainings are going to be about how do we mitigate, how do we maneuver through commissions, conversations with buyers, conversations with now with the sellers at the listing appointment, if you're a listing agent. But guys, just know from an opportunity standpoint, this is an opportunity. And you say, well, George, how is it? It's an opportunity because what it does is these types of moments clean house. They clean up, the, in so many words, the riffraff that shouldn't even be in this business. I've always called them the skimmers, the people who show up in good markets and disappear in bad markets. They're the people who think, oh, well, you know, I can work out of my home, in my bunny slippers, in my robe, sell a bunch of real estate, and it's no big deal. I don't have to be highly skilled. I'm more of a tour guide who just shows a few homes. But no matter how bad or good I do, I still get paid my, let's just say, 3%. Oftentimes, it's offered out there on the MLS. That's not selling. So where's the opportunity? The opportunity is this, in my opinion. It's number one, is that the people who are unskilled, who are doing hardly any business, who shouldn't even be in our business, are going to depart this business. That is awesome. Why? Because this is the other part of the opportunity. Those who are committed to being the best salespeople, those who are committed to being the most successful in this business, will make a deeper commitment, as we always have in this organization, to be more skilled, meaning better communicator, better mindset, more transparency, the ability to explain yourself, sell yourself, and articulate the pathway of home ownership, not only for the buyer, but also what's important for the seller to contrib contribute to and participate in specifically when it comes to commissions. So you may say, well, George, you're just talking all hunky-dory about this. Oh, I could get all down and out. I could get a little discouraged. I could talk about, let's just made it a little bit more difficult. Of course. But in the famous and wonderful words of the late, great Jim Rohn, who said, stop wishing that it is easier and start wishing that you are better. And my observation is that the opportunity is, is for you to truly become the salesperson that you're capable of becoming, that you're going to pay the price of what it means to be a great presenter to both buyers and sellers. The opportunity is, is that you'll pay the price as to how to improve the way in which you converse. Now, some of you are extremely good already at this, but some of you aren't. There's a reason why you love to work with buyers, maybe more than sellers. Why? Because there's less rejection. There's less skill that has been needed in the past. And those just two reasons in themselves is a good enough reason to take a step back and ask yourself, okay, all right, what's, how about this? What's not under attack? Well, what is not under attack is the listing commission. Now, one could say they're under attack, like Brenda Lee Jones and we were talking about this earlier this morning, under attack that that same seller may have to go out and buy a home and have the same challenges, no question. But the commission itself for the seller and for the listing agent is not under attack. So where's the opportunity? Well, the opportunity is to master the ability to list and sell houses. Because if you can list and sell, then you've lost the real challenge. If you're already doing this, you're probably just shrugging your shoulders going, okay, well, the listing agent just got more control. Yep, they did. They got a lot more control. They get to control the commission. They get to control the in, the conversation with their seller as to what's fair, not fair. What will they pay, not pay? What's, what are they willing to do, not do? And so the thing that you have to recognize is the opportunity also is involved in the fact of mastering your ability to take a listing. So could you take more listings? Could you get better at taking more listings? Is the requirement for the amount of money that you're earning or could potentially earn, is it not fair that you would have to then prospect consistently 
talk to people consistently, do the work consistently. See, the days of putting in almost nominal effort but getting tons of money are done. That's a fact. That's a beautiful thing for those who work hard. That's a beautiful thing for those who pay the price. That's what they want. Now, again, you have to get better. That's the opportunity. So again, problem, solution. Look, there's the mechanical conversations that we're going to have. Today at 3 o'clock, the Salt Lake Board of Realtors is going to be having Curtis Bullock speaking and addressing this. And yes, do I think there's going to be some changes in the MLS? May they change some things in agent remarks and allow you to do certain things? May there even be changes in regards to the way loans are done and the way in which loans can come together and what constitutes closing costs? Is it commissions? Is it not? That's a big question. So there's a number of these questions that we don't have an answer to, but there's enough of them that we do. And the obvious is, is that if you go take listings consistently and price them right, no matter what the scenario is, whatever the buyer agent commission is doing, you're going to be paid. That is in its first foremost, that's one place you should be putting your focus. Second, do I truly believe that the seller is never going to pay commissions? Look, you and I both know they're going to be still paying commissions. The nonsense that it's predetermined versus undetermined. Yeah. Is that challenging? Especially if you're primarily a buyer's agent? Yes. Is it frustrating that you have to have a deeper conversation with your buyer and explain the way commissions work that if you don't include it in the deal, if the seller's not willing to pay it, then we need to work something else out. In my career, I've only had two times where I've had literally notes of paying commissions. I don't know how much that will happen, but I can see that happening a little bit more. I can see the fact that the escrow instruction sheets will include the commissions every single time now. I believe that will there be some changes in the MLS to the public as to how much is being paid? Yes. Is there the conflict that if a seller absolutely wants to have commissions being offered because they know that will draw the agents to bringing them a client, that they have that right? And who are they to tell you that they don't have that, that they you or, you or anyone to tell you that they don't have that right? That's the real bizarre part of this is there's going to be sellers who go, whoa, 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 I like it done this way because if I tell them there's a commission and it's three or four or whatever percent it is, it might be, I have a better chance of getting my home sold. Do you, do you think that's gone going to have gone away? No. So the question is, is that we have to then be what? A better communicator, more skilled, more transparent, more valuable. Hence the reason why, show up at the morning meeting, show up and practice, role play these scenarios. When someone says, well, I hear that this end of 6% is done and it's only now three. How do you respond to that? Well, here, let me just say this. I spoke about it this morning in the morning meeting, but I would challenge each and every one of us to, we have to be extraordinarily good at asking questions. Now, you may say, well, what questions are we supposed to ask, George? How about simple ones? Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I know you're saying that commissions have changed and the seller doesn't have to pay them. So let me ask you a question. In today's marketplace, with over 8,000 homes on the market, if we include Washington County, Salt Lake County, Davis County, and Utah County, 8,000 plus homes on the market, I'm curious, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, how do you suspect that buyers are going to want to come see your home if the buyer's agents don't believe they're going to get paid? Well, I don't know. It's a good question. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, let me ask you a question. Was this your first home? Yes, yes, it actually was my first home. So let me ask you a question. Did you pay for all of the commissions up front to your buyer's agent? Well, no. Uh, let me ask you a question. Did you pay for your closing costs? No. Were you able to have your down payment? Was that an easy thing for you to save for and bring to the table? No. So again, let me ask you a question. How are these things going to be paid for and how is the deal going to come together if you aren't willing to pay something? And you pause and you wait. Now, this will be the stuff we work on. But guys, common sense would say that so much of this, I'm not just trying to sell you on something. Heaven, so much of our company's earnings come from buyer sales. But let's just be candid here. Let's be let's keep it simple. Like ask common sense questions. Like, how do you get first-time home buyers to buy a house? How do they find someone to help them? 
Is it then they have no advocate? They go straight to the listing agent and then have no advocacy on their behalf, no agency on their behalf. And then they're signing an actual document with limited agency or they're signing another agreement that says, wait a second here, you're self-representing and the document says in the agency disclosure, we encourage you to go get an agent. Oh, but you, we won't pay them. What? So you can see how messed up this whole thing is. I mean, it's not like this is, you know, a simple science to this thing. And the reason it's not is because this is the reason for nearly 100 years it's worked this way is because it's really effective. There's an enticement for the buyer agent to show the buyer. The seller still at the end of the day, I still believe is going to be spending money and paying for the majority of all commissions. It just will be handled differently. We'll see how they want to disclose it in the MLS or if it's just even simply in the remarks section of the transaction, it will say, seller willing to pay commission, please include that with escrow instruction sheet when you present your offer. I could see that be a standard tagline in the agent remarks inside the commissions with some changes so there's not a violation of discussing commissions in the agent remarks. But my point being, guys, America is built on the idea of home ownership. And yes, you will have to become even better at what you do. You will have to be a better communicator. You will have to be more skilled. You will have to convey a better message. You will have to be more certain, more precise, more transparent, more bold, more direct, more of all of it that it takes to be a better salesperson. But in the end of the day, what's, what's going to be the challenge? The challenge is the suits are going away. The challenge is, is that buyers want to buy, sellers want to sell. And somewhere in the midst of that, transparency has to be held at the highest level. We have to stop obviously saying that commissions are being paid off, paid for on behalf of the seller every time, because it won't be every time. Will you have to justify, validate, and verify and value your services as a buyer's agent? Yes, it's the reason why the elevation of the game has elevated. Why? Because people are sick of paying money for things that don't have value. So let's make sure we're highly valuable. Let's make sure we're highly skilled. Let's make sure we're able to explain the need, the reasons, and the reasons for agency and the advocacy of us being involved in a transaction. That's a critical component to the game. And yes, will there be some answers unveiled? Of course there will. But at this, <laughs> excuse me, at the same time, remember the fabric of America, what makes it tick is home ownership. Even in the most darkest hours of 2008, 2009, what did they do? The government walked in and said, we're going to pay you if you haven't bought a home in the last three years. We're going to pay you. We're going to write you a check to go buy a house because it is critical to our economy. It is critical to the future of the United States. So there will always be a pathway for home ownership. Now, look, if the buying agent side of things is maybe disappearing or changing or evolving or being adjusted, okay. So now how do you respond? How do you respond? You know, I've always appreciated the statement that uh, was said about Wayne Gretzky when he was asked, how did you get to be so good, Wayne? How are you so successful? How are you winning so many hockey games? And he responded with this statement, I skate to where the puck is going to be. Not where it is, he skates where it's going to be. So if this market is evolving, and this organization is so well known for its power in regards to the listing. What are you doing today to go take a listing? What are you doing today within that listing to educate your seller as to how homes are being sold and will be sold in the future? That's on you. That's on you to future pace the situation in a better way. It's on you to explain to your seller the importance of commissions and how this market actually works. And to maybe not believe everything that comes off of KSL or CNN or whatever news media station is coming out, that they literally get the help because you showed up. They get the truth because you showed up. They get transparency because you showed up. They get value because you showed up. And when you come from that space, there shouldn't be much to worry about. The thing that's funny to me, the only people that are worried are the people who can't find a, buy, find a seller. 
if you're great at taking sellers commit sellers and getting your commission, you're not going to have a problem moving forward. As long as you can price it right, get the listings, you're going to be in great shape. So with that said, just remember on Friday, we're going to be talking more about this. But if you're wondering on a personal level, am I sleeping well at night? Not that you're probably wondering, but just so you know, I am. Slept like a baby last night. And I say that to you because, guys, you are the most well-equipped, best trained, most focused, strongest mindset of a group of agents and people that the world has ever seen. So look, if you're fearful, if you're scared, if you're nervous of the unknown, what I would tell you is get your mind right, get mentally there, get your skills up. And then back it up with the disciplines that are necessary to win the game of real estate. Do I have every answer as to how a transaction will unfold in July? No. Do I believe that a seller still will have the right to pay a commission? Absolutely. You can't force someone to make it illegal them not to be able to pay a commission. Uh, do I believe that a seller uh, will have some form, some way to offer a commission? I believe there will be a way that they find for them to do so with the agency agreement and the permission they may have to give to the other agent who's or the agent who's listed their home, will a seller still be able to contribute? Yes. Do I believe a buyer is going to have to pay some commissions out of pocket? Absolutely, they will, those who can. Will the majority still be included in the sale? Absolutely. Yes, they will be. But in the end, I don't believe it's going to have an impact. Let me just close with just one or two more things. One, do I believe that home values are going to go down? Absolutely not. The ludicrous idea, the silliness of the idea that, an, that a buyer commission change is going to reduce home values is nothing but a circus clown act. It is a clown act. Because what I know for certain is that I've, I mean, I mean, all the buyers and sellers that I've worked with that eventually or at one point were for sale by owners. There's not a for sale by owner who doesn't reduce. They don't reduce the cost of their home. They are selling it on their own so that they can net more money off of it because they don't have to include commissions in it. There's not a single seller that goes, oh, oh, hold, hold on a second here. You mean I don't have to pay a commission? Oh, well, then I'll reduce the cost of my house. No, they're going to go, oh, cool. I don't have to pay a commission. Guess what? I just made more. So let's let's give perspective to what we're dealing with. Right? Commissions are not going away. Sellers will still pay a tremendous amount of money in commission. Will there be buyer relationships where the buyer pays the commission out of pocket? No question that'll happen. But if you're asking me, do I think commissions are going away? That's absurd. Do I think that the MLS is going away? Absurd. Do I think that it's necessary to have it listed on the MLS, the amount of commission? Not necessarily. Do I believe every offer will include some level of commissions? Yes. Do I believe that the buyer is better represented having an agent involved in their sale, representing their needs, their uh, requirements and expectations of a sale? And protection from a buyer's agent, not a listing agent who represents both sides, limited scenario. No, not that. Like, they need to be represented. And so I don't believe any of that's going away. Will it be modified? Will it be tweaked? Yes. But I want to leave you, I'm going to say two points. Here's the last point. I, was, I thought about this even before I started. Every one of these things that we're talking about is noise. Now, you can say it's good noise or bad noise. Right, noise of markets going down, no noise of markets going up, noise of rate rates going down, interest rates going up, going down. Noise. It's all noise. Now, sometimes it's good noise. Sometimes you like the music. Sometimes you don't. But just remember, it's noise. So do not let any of this stuff, these distractions, this noise, do not let it be something that says, "Oh, okay." Well, I, I I I now don't have the prospect. Uh, you know, I, I I don't have to show up in the mornings now because, well, you know, this commission thing is so overwhelming. If you're letting the commission structures and the way in which commissions will operate long term, short term inside the industry of real estate on a local and national level, come on, get a grip. 
get a grip. You know, wake up. You know this. Wake up. Come on. This is just giving you an excuse to not have to work. It's giving you an excuse to not have to prospect. It's giving you an excuse to say you don't want to work with that buyer because it might just be too difficult. But when you engage and you take on and you're like, I'm going to battle through this. I'm going to find the challenges and the problems. I'm going to find the impact of those challenges and problems. And man, I'm going to find a solution. And then I'm going to look for the opportunity. That's what great leadership does. They look for the opportunity. They cast a vision amongst the in the midst of the chaos. And they make sure there's clarity. That's your job. Your job hasn't changed. It's just going to have to be considered more relevant and more valuable and more transparent and more clear so that you can create the relationships that you need to have, want to have, so you can earn the money that you totally want and deserve. And if that's the case, then you better get real serious about, okay, hold on a second. How does this really work? How do I present? How do I talk? How do I communicate? What do I do to make that happen? But do not get overwhelmed. Do not be nervous. Don't be scared. Don't walk around fearful. Don't wonder like, oh gosh, there's so much uncertainty. What uncertainty? Doing your job like you've always supposed to have done it. Explain to people, transparent with people, valuable to people, giving people different perspectives, asking tons of great questions, opening up the dialogue so they can see possibly either the wisdom in your questions or even the foolishness that they're considering because of your questions. But that all happens because you've raised the bar as to how skilled you are and who you really are and the magnitude of who you are and the way that you approach your business, which essentially is how you approach your life. Okay. I think everybody is, I think everybody is muted. And I I think Russ is listening, but just guys and gals, if you'd like to ask a question, I'm, I'm willing to stay on the line for just a little bit longer. But if there's a question, if there's a comment, if like, hey, George, what about, I would love to hear what you have to say. And maybe Russ could unmute everybody. If, if Russ, if you're if you're still right there, I sure would like it. And if it's not there, I'm, I'm seeing some chat, chats. Let me just see what. what yeah, George, uh, I'll unmute, but you're going to have, it'll, it's going to mute you. So you'll have to unmute again too. Okay. Um, I do not know. Oh, wait, black eyed peas. There we go. All right. Okay, so you ha- you're going to have to unmute again, George. Now, and then everybody else can unmute. Oh, okay. And by the way, I yes, black eyed peas. There we go. What about new construction? I'm just looking at the chat box. Uh, you you uh, and then am I able to unmute them? I'm unmuted. I unmuted okay. myself. Perfect. So, Miranda, what do you mean by new uh, new construction? So. I was keeping up with Facebook posts this weekend of um, by agents who it's just noise and they're promoting it, unfortunately, and uh, repeating what doesn't need to be repeated. And one person brought up, I wonder what's going to happen with new construction because buyer's agency commission can't be um, shown on the MLS. Okay, that's the MLS. They haven't really been part of the MLS. So there were just some questions around how to navigate in new construction, if we're going to be relevant to them, or if they're just going to feel like, oh, more the better for us, because now we, it's, it's not really necessary to pay buyer's agency commission. I still feel that we as buyer's agents will be a hundred percent relevant to new construction, but I'm just curious what direction builders might take that. Any, any thoughts on your end? I don't think it will change one iota. I think agents, but brokerages that or builders, sorry, builders that they even have their little brokerage as a possibility or they're self-representing, whatever they're doing, I think it will be no different from the standpoint that if, in you know, you always all know this as a general rule, if you don't walk in with your client, it's unlikely you're going to get paid. They could say, we're, we're not going to pay. You're going to look at your client, go, we have our agency agreement signed or buy a broker agreement signed. Uh, we've identified what the commissions are. We're going to include this in the deal or they're going to have to walk because they're responsible for paying the commission. I mean, I, th- I think, I don't think anything's going to be any different other than every deal you do will have an escrow instruction agreement, a conversation previous to this with your, with your buyer. And if the seller becomes, you know, uh, you know, they're, 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 there's, unless their seller is just trying to be difficult, a seller is going to say, 
builder or seller, seller, builder, doesn't matter to me. Listing doesn't matter. They're going to say, this is our bottom line. Whatever you do above that, knock yourself out. Now, do I believe it's conceivable that something may not appraise? Possibly. Probably not with the, the amount of, that most commissions would be. Uh, but I think you may have to deal with that. And then just like any moment, you're going to have to deal with a with a, a, a commission issue, an appraisal issue, if that becomes the case. But I don't think it has any change other than what it's always been. And then, yes, you have to have a better communication with your sell buyer. Uh, you may need to have a conversation in your point of with the builder, but or just like you would with a listing agent on a normal existing home sale, you're going to have that conversation. So for me, I, I, I don't see there being much of a difference in regards to new construction, which I don't know very many builders that don't still try to take advantage of the idea that when someone walks through without a agent, they couldn't be more happy to secure that and not pay one. Yeah, true point. But I don't know anything. I can't see any difference. That's why, to your point, though, also, Marina, is that everyone's getting everyone to focus on all this stuff. Look, guys, you know this. Great leaders. Just want, just want you to think about it. Great leaders get individuals to focus on the right stuff. Look, I'm I, in fairness, like I, I, I'm not even labeling myself as great, but I'm I'm just telling you, I'm I'm trying to get you to focus on the right stuff. Obviously, with this phone call or with this with this message today. Your job with your sellers or with your buyers or with your past clients or your sphere of influence or whoever it is you're talking to is to get people to focus on the right stuff. Now, do I think that there will be sellers who will be so obstinate and silly about it that they can't even see beyond your conversation? Possibly. But I think that'll be far and few between. There'll be more conversations about the facts, the power of where we're going. And the power of getting their home sold, even in today's market and the challenges of a market with commissions, affordability, inventory, all of these are real issues that are going on today. And those are the real issues at, at stake. Okay, any other questions anybody has? You guys can unmute if you have a question. Anybody else? Either a kind of, hey, what about or what if and what if this happened or what if, would you say when they say this or what would you do if someone did that? Nothing. Anything you've the one heard? Thing, the one Go. thing I just want to say is don't feed the bad wolf. When you're posting online, be really cautious about reposting CNN's headlines and feed the good wolf, not the bad wolf. And be yeah. prudent about what you're sharing with uh, when you are out there educating, because after being in this business for what, 18 years, <laughs> we have so much pull, so much clout, unrealized clout and credibility with our ability to educate people and inform them correctly. And that is so important today after all these headlines that have come out. It is so important for us to educate people correctly and calmly instead of feeding the bad wolf and the, the hype. Oh, yes. Well said. Yeah, be part of the calm, right? There's no question about this. Like, this is just common sense. I still have yet to see how this is going to impact for the good and for the positive any any homeowner or home sell, home buyer. But, of course... Someone had to make an argument in regards to home values, but I just don't see it. I, I literally do not see the pathway of how it's going to be better. Okay, guys, any other thoughts, comments? So, many, so good to see so many of you on the call today. Remember, just if you it did just jump on Friday, 11 a.m., we're going to do a compliance call. I'm going to participate in that. But Russ, of course, Orchard, your principal broker, uh, Jason Carlson, myself, uh, I suspect even John Syatt. And uh, we're going to have more conversations. I think they'll be a little bit relieved this week, or, or released, not relieved, released this week in regards to specifically uh, how the MLS will handle some of these challenges, uh, what the future holds in regards to the discussion of commissions. But I will say this, that the seller is always going to have rights to do whatever they choose to do with their property. And that you can't forget. The seller has a choice. A buyer has a choice. And the one thing that I conclude on is that you can see 
these people have choices. Now, they may be changed the mechanism of where the MLS puts the commission or how commissions are discussed, but they still have the right to pay for things. They have the right to offer inducements and bonuses and ways to get a property sold. That is a critical component to salesmanship. It's, it's, it's capitalism, if you would say, at its finest, is that the seller, the buyer, has the right to do as they wish, to pay as they wish, and to operate a transaction as they wish, as long as it's honest, ethical, and above board. All right. Any other thoughts, comments? Okay. Guys, 11 o'clock a.m., uh, if you aren't signed up, I'd encourage you to get signed up for the Salt Lake Board of Realtors, those who belong to it. At 3 p.m., there's a, a link, or I'm sure you could call them if you didn't get the email, and get the link to get signed up. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a tremendous amount of people on that call. And just, again, getting more information, more and more wisdom to maneuver and to navigate through these moments. Okay? Anything else, guys? Okay. Remember, prospect, prospect, prospect. List, list, list. That is a good solution and an amazing opportunity for anything and everything that's happened in this market. All right, guys, have an extraordinary rest of the week and we'll talk soon.